In this week, we will continue the topic of the brain network analysis, but we are going to introduce a method called uh, dynamic causal modeling, or in short, DCM. Dynamic causal, causal modeling is one of the uh, effective connectivity approach that we can actually um, consider the potential causality between different brain regions. So we can say maybe the activation of region A may induce the activation of a region B. Or at least we can say uh, the activation from the region A may uh, affect or may change the activation of uh, region B. So I think this is one of the approach called dynamic causal modeling. And uh, again, this is actually uh, implemented by the uh, SPM team. So you can actually use in the SPM 12 to perform this kind of analysis. So again, please uh, visit my website and download the handout and the materials from this week, week 12. We are focusing on the uh, DCM. And uh, you may find out that you may find that the materials that I provided to you today is actually uh, uh, downloaded from this website, uh, the SPM uh, website. The, the team of the SPN also provided the uh, demo data and the manual that uh, introduced the uh, basic idea of the DCM and also the data for your reference to perform some practice on the DCM analysis. So if you want to find the details about the data and the information, you can go visit, visit this SPN website. Uh, however, I already included all the materials that we need to use today and uh, some additional information in this uh, zip file. So please visit my website, uh, download the handout and the materials. Uh, today we definitely will use the SPM12 as well as the MI Crow for your convenience to fill the nifty file or the analyze uh, 75 format. So please, uh, again, ensure that the Melody environment uh, has already included the path for the SPM12. And again, since we are using the SPM12, so there is no file name should include Chinese character or space. Otherwise, you may see some error message during the file import or file load. Okay. So again, this is a roadmap of, of this course. You can see that we are now staying within the brain cognitive analysis block right here. In the last week, we have already talked about the functional connectivity. That means we can uh, at least use Pearson coefficient coefficient uh, to calculate the similarity or the dependency between two different uh, brain regions. In this week, we are going to extend this kind of brain connectivity uh, topic to the effective connectivity. Okay, so let's start from the uh, first part that I'm going to give you some principal ideas or the basis of the dynamic causal modeling, DCM. First of all, I'd like to use this slide to compare uh, the functional connectivity and effective connectivity. Uh, basically, the functional connectivity uh, is to make inferences on the structure of relationships among brain regions. That means uh, we may have some kind of a both signal, maybe extracted from the uh, cervical RI or extracted from the atlas-based brain regions. However, we may have the average, average of both signal as the major, then we are going to major uh, the similarity between them. So we may make the inference whether these uh, different brain regions may have high correlation to fulfill some kind of the functional tasks. However, for the effective connectivity, we may have the further uh, inference. Then we may make statements about causal effects. That means who is the boss, who is the employee. Okay, so you can see. Uh, the causal effects among tasks and the brain regions may be the main target for the effect connectivity. So not only the causal effect between brain regions, but we may want to see kind of effect or maybe broad uh, based on the task you designed. For example, if you uh, give some kind of the uh, visual stimuli, you want to know whether this kind of the uh, visual stimuli may alter or modulate the connectivity between brain regions. So this is kind of the causal effects between brain regions and uh, between tasks and the brain regions. Okay, so this is what uh, effective connectivity is going to do. However, effective connectivity um, is actually, uh, to me, is a more advanced approach compared to the functional connectivity. Because 
Function connectivity, as we mentioned in the last week, is kind of the uh, data-driven approach. That means you, you don't really need uh, too much prior information about the model design or experimental design. However, effective connectivity is actually one of the hypothesis-driven approach. You will see in the later slides that we actually need to uh, have a specific model design. And then we are going to test whether uh, the relationships between task and the brain region can be validated to see whether, the, for example, the task factor attention can really affect one of the connections. So you can see on your right-hand side, this is actually the model that you need to construct before you can estimate the effective connectivity between regions. For example, you focus on three different brain regions. V1, that is the primary visual cortex. V5 is the motion-related visual cortex. And uh, SPC, superior parietal cortex, that mainly focus on the uh, visual perception or the uh, perception for the motion or something else. So you may have the hypothesis that we, once a participant receives some kind of a visual stimuli, this will firstly uh, focus on the primary visual cortex. Then this kind of the primary uh, sensation will further affect uh, some higher level visual cortex, that is the motion related uh, visual cortex. If you are seeing some pictures or some dots that are actually moving on the screen, then you may uh, involve the activation of this V5 motion related visual cortex right here. So within this model, you will see that actually you have so many different assumptions or so many prior knowledge that you can construct this kind of model. And what the effective connecti connectivity can do is this kind of approach will further validate whether your model is reliable or whether uh, or what kind of the uh, effective connectivity can happen between these different uh, brain regions. So for the effective connectivity, you can make a stronger inference. However, it's kind of the hypothesis but you definitely need uh, a specific amount of design. Then you can estimate the correlation uh, or estimate the uh, parameters between these different brain regions. So we may uh, summarize what I just mentioned, that effective connectivity provides more theoretically powerful inference. However, with the requirement of much stronger assumptions. So you need to survey so many different papers, survey the literatures, then you may understand that the potential function behind the V1 or behind the V5 or behind the SPC. You may have the uh, general idea of their roles. However, you want to really use your study or use your fMRI data to prove this kind of the relationship uh, is true. Okay. And the second point is, the uh, validity of the conclusions depend strongly on the assumptions being correct. That means if you design a raw model, for example, you didn't consider the region of V5, then you will never have the chance to see the correlation between V1 and V5. So this is actually um, depends on your assumption. If you don't have the knowledge about the V5, you will never consider about this, and you will never have the right inference to say, actually, the moving dots can induce or can change the connectivity between V1 and V5. Okay, so this is a very, very strong uh, requirement for uh, the correctness of the inference for the effective connectivity. And uh, based on this point, this kind of the uh, assumption also become one of the uh, major shortcoming of this kind of the uh, effective cognitive analysis because not many of the researchers or not many of the students have this kind of the uh, strong knowledge or the assumption for the model you are going to test. And also you may see even you are so confident about your model. You, you, you mentioned that I already surveyed so many different literatures and I built up this model and I definitely get a, a result that I believed. However, when you submit a paper to one of the journal, the review may still question your model. They may say, based on my experience, you should try something else. So this is kind of the, uh, the shortcoming or some, uh, some issue that when you are going to try the effect on connectivity, you may need to deal with. Okay. So model design is the essential point for the, at least for DCM, you need to figure this out. If you want to find out more information, you can uh, just see this one of the uh, YouTube video. It's actually a good one 
a short one, however, it will show you what is the basic idea behind the effective connectivity. Uh, right now, uh, the methods for the effective connectivity analysis include so many different ways. And I think uh, the earliest one may be the uh, structural e e e equation modeling, in short SEM. And uh, followed by this one, Granger causality. This one is actually um, originally developed for the economic, economic model. Sometimes you want to uh, predict the, the stocks trending or something, you can use the Granger causality. And uh, later on, uh, people from neuroscience territory uh, apply this kind of a Granger causality to measure the e effective connectivity between brand regions. Okay, so this DCM is actually the one that we are going to introduce today. And the PPI is actually can be implemented by using SPM. However, today we don't have enough time to introduce this one. But if we have time in uh, maybe following weeks, I may try to squeeze this topic in, into our course. Okay. So today we focus on this one, dynamic cost of modeling. This is the original paper that published in neural imaging in 2003. Uh, the author is uh, Carl Freestone. And uh, he mentioned that DCM is used to test the specific hypothesis that motivated the experimental design. Very important point is it is not an exploratory technique. So if you have no idea about your data or you have no idea about the experimental design, do not use DCM. Okay, and this is not the technique that you can try to explore your data or learn the information from your data. This is not a good idea. Okay, you definitely have a specific hypothesis and you will design your FMI experiment based on this kind of hypothesis. Then you will use a DCM to perform the effective conductive analysis. So this is a very important point. Do not use this as the exploratory technique, okay? And we say uh, the results are specific to the, the task design and the stimuli you uh, delivered to the subject during the experiment. Okay. So if you may recall that we uh, mentioned this kind or introduced this kind of the very important phenomenon in your brain, neurofascial coupling. What we can um, see or what we can measure using the FMI is actually the vascular response, not the direct and, um, neuronal activity. Okay. So what DCM is going to do is attempt to model the latent or underlying neuronal interactions using both time series. So both time series is the same you can really observe. However, this is on the vascular response level or hemodynamics level. But DCM um, will using some basic models assumption so you can actually attempt to model the underlying neuronal interaction or neuronal states right there. Okay, this is the first thing you need to know. Okay, so effective connectivity is parameterized in terms of the coupling among unobserved. This is very important. You don't, you didn't really see this kind of the uh, neural neuronal activity. However, you try to use effective connectivity to parameterize uh, this kind of the unobserved neuronal activity. Okay. So although we are uh, in this label, based on the DCM model, you can see this. So we need some kind of the mathematical model behind this. In this slide, I'd like to introduce the conceptual basis of the DCM. As I mentioned in the last slide, you can see what you can measure is the both signal. This is on this level. This is a hemodynamic measurement. So the variable Y right here, you can say Y1 may represent the both series or the both time series uh, for uh, the first brain region right here. So I may use the y1 of t because the both series is kind of a function of time. Okay, so you can put the y1 of t right here. And y2 of t right here definitely represent for another brain regions. Okay, so you can extract the brain uh, both signals from another uh, region 2 right here. So I would write uh, y2 of t right here. This is the observable um, signals or data on hand right now. However, we may want to make some inference uh, between two brain regions and uh, between two neuronal states right here. So again, you may say the physical response Y1 of T is actually the um, subsequent response to the neuronal state of region one. So now we, we use the variable of Z 
to represent the neuronal activity or neuronal state right here. So you have the corresponding z1 of t right here. Again, you will have another variable z2 of t to represent the corresponding neuronal state uh, behind or, uh, or under the uh, y2 measurement right here. Okay. And as we mentioned that DCM attempts to model or to attempts to uh, measure the potential relationship between neuronal state. So now we try to uh, make several new variables right here. The first one, we may say the variable of A, we can either put uh, in a lowercase a right here or in a capital A right here. However, the capital A more like a collection of the all the um, uh, uh, lowercase a right here. Okay, so you can see now we can say they may have some intrinsic or fixed connectivity between region one and region two right here, and we can say the uh, potential causal effect from region one to region two. We can use a two one as the as the potential coefficient to measure the effect from region one to region two. And of course, we can have another variable right here that this A12 actually measure the effect cost from the region 2 to the region 1 right here. So please get familiar with this kind of the annotation right here. And also, we may have the A11 and the A22 right here. That means the, uh, the self, self cost of index right here. So you can see we have A11 and A22. So now we can write down two equations right here. You can see there is a z1 with, with an over dot right here. Over dot means it is actually the changes changes of z1 state uh, along different time point. So you can uh, now um, write down a measurement of z1 over dot right here as the uh, combined effects from its original original uh, neuronal state with the coefficient with a11. So you can see the original z1 state can affect the uh, time variant changes of the z1 state right here. And again, uh, some potential um, effect or some potential um, inference may cost by the z2. So you can see there is a z2 profile right here, but with a coefficient as the a12. That means this is the potential uh, effective connectivity from uh, region 2 to region 1 right here. So in a very similar way, you can write down Z2 with an overdog right here. That means the Z2 neuronal state changes a long time. Again, it will uh, be affected by the original Z2 state with the coefficient A22 right here. And also, it can may receive some kind of the influence from the region 1. So you can see this is the original state from the region 1 with a coefficient uh, as the A21. That means the influence from region 1 to region 2 right here. So this is actually the uh, equations that we can uh, model the intrinsic or fixed connectivity right here. However, as we mentioned, DCM uh, allowed us to uh, measure the potential relationship between the task stimuli and the, uh, the connectivity between regions right there. So now we may define there is uh, another input right here. U represents for the input. So this input may be some kind of the uh, experimental design, for example, the visual stimuli, or uh, some kind of the uh, effect of the stu stimuli. For example, you ask a subject to looking at the moving dots, then the effect would be motion, okay? So we may say, for example, you can have one of the uh, condition right here, for example, the motion. It may be affect the effective connectivity between region one and B, uh, region two. We will say that B, uh, B, the coefficient for this kind of a U2, we may give uh, the coefficient as the B21. That means this kind of input can affect uh, original coefficient between uh, or from region one to region two. So this kind of uh, B in lowercase, uh, we can say the collection of the, all the uh, B in lowercase, the capital B is the modulatory effects right here. It can modify or modulate the connectivity between these two regions. And another kind of the effects, we may say this is the driving or direct effect right here. For example, you can have an input not 
uh, actually um, put the effect on the connectivity, but directly affect the neuronal state for one region. So we, we may say this kind of the input U1 right here is uh, can cause some kind of the direct or driving effect on a specific brain region right here. And the coefficient for this kind of the direct or driving effect, we will use the C right here. So you can see if this kind of the driving effect is focused on the region 1, we will put the C11 right here. So now this is the full equation right here. You can see uh, the neuronal state for region 1 can not only affect it by its original neuronal state, but it can also affect it by this uh, neuronal state from the Z2 with the coefficient uh, as the A12 right here. But also, this kind of neural state can be um, affected by the input 1, U1 right here, with the coefficient C11 right here. And for the, uh, the neuronal state changes a long time, Z2 over down right here, it can actually affect it by its original uh, neuronal state right here. And also, the uh, neuronal state from the region 1 with the coefficient A21. But again, you have another uh, input U2 right here with a coefficient B21 right here may also affect or modulate the effect connectivity. Of course, this kind of the effect connectivity is originated from region 1. So you will put the Z1 right here. Okay. So this is actually the full representation of this kind of DCM model that we believe the intrinsic and also some modulatory and the driving effect can uh, change the relationship between these kind of the models. Okay. Now we may rewrite these kind of the equations into uh, this general form right here. This is more like the matrix form or factor form right here. So you can uh, say you can see this kind of the general equation actually include the a. Please, please remember that the capital A represent the fixed connectivity between regions, and also the capital B right here. Again, we say capital B represents the modulatory effects on the connectivity between regions. And the capital C right here is the effect we call the direct or driving effects because the input U will directly uh, have the effects on a specific brain region, not on the connectivity, but on a specific brain region right here. So you can see this kind of the uh, equation uh, can be rewritten as this form that we can try to characterize our neuronal state. Or sometimes we say this equation is the neuronal state equation right here. So you can see some detailed information about this. But I may introduce this term to you, context independent or context dependent. Context means the task, okay, the experiment that you delivered to the subject. So if the parameters or the matrix that are actually independent to the task or the stimuli you deliver to the subjects, then we'll say this is a context independent. So for A right here, this is actually the fixed or intrinsic connectivity. So it won't change uh, with the task you delivered. Okay. So we say A is actually the context independent connectivity. However, for B right here, we say this is an input that can modulate or change the inner connectivity. So we will say B is actually the context dependent uh, premise right here. Okay. So I think this is the uh, bilinear equation to measure or to model the neural state equation, you definitely need to memorize this kind of the equation. However, as we mentioned that what we have on hand, the fmi board signal is actually uh, measured from the level of the hemodynamics. That means if you only have this kind of neuronal state equation, it didn't give you the uh, sufficient information about what kind of the profile that your data should be look like or what kind of data you should observe. So you need some kind of the transformation that can transform this kind of the neural state equation to the hemodynamic state equation or sometimes more dynamic term we say both single change equation right here. Okay, this is the thing or this is the profile that you can actually observe the using FMI or using both FMI right here. So now the gap right here is we need a transformation uh, we call it balloon model right here. Balloon model is actually constructed based on these six different parameters. However, uh, there are so much information behind this model so I'm not going to 
spend too much time on this. I just want to let you know there is a balloon model. So you can actually transfer uh, some kind of the neuronal activity into the bullet synchrons right here. Okay. And this is uh, very important. If you have the neural state equation right here, as well as the hemodynamic state equations right here, then you can test whether a model you construct or whether a model you send into the DCM, you can use this kind of model to, to see or to validate whether this kind of model can predict a similar both signal that you really observed uh, during your task. So there is a paper published in Neural Imaging in uh, 2013. This paper is actually, I think, they originally published this paper for some clinicians. They try to use plain words or uh, some general idea to introduce the DCM. So there is not too much uh, mathematical information or not too many equations on this paper. However, they try to summarize the general idea of the DCM into 10 rules right here. So I try to uh, list it, all the 10 rules right here. It's, I think it's kind of a good summary uh, before you try to uh, practice how to perform the DCM analysis. Okay, the first one is neural activities causes behavior. This is a very strong assumption. That means if you try to use some task or you try to use some ex experiment, you may want to see some uh, changes of the neural, neuronal activity that may be response to this kind of the uh, test stimuli or the changes of the uh, subject's behavior right there. So this is a very strong uh, hypothesis right here. Okay. The second point is neural imaging data or the bold FMI okay, is generated by downstream the effects of neural activity. What is the downstream effect? That is the faster response. So we didn't uh, directly measure the neural activity using both fMI, but we measure the downstream effects, that is the faster response after the neural activation. Okay. The third point right here, experimental manipulations can directly perturb or change the neural activity. If your experimental design cannot change or cannot induce any change of the neural activity, your DCM model may fail. Okay. And the fourth point right here, functional connectivity describes statistical dependence between regions. I think you, you, you definitely uh, tend to believe this point because we have mentioned this point in the last week. Okay, so this is not a big deal right here. The fifth point right here, effective connectivity, or sometimes we say directional connectivity or causal connectivity, is defined by a model and corresponds to the directed influence that one region exerts on the rate of change of activity in another. Okay, so this is what the causality means, that one region can induce some changes of another region. So we are not simply say that they have some, uh, they have a high similarity between regions. Now we claim furthermore, we say that one region can cause the neural state or the both signal changes for another region. Okay, this is the, what effective connectivity means. The sixth point right here, experimental mani manipulations can also change the effective connectivity strength. This is the modulatory effect that we just mentioned. That this kind of experimental stimuli can not only change the neural state in one brain region, but also can change or modulate the effective connectivity between regions right there. Okay. And the seventh point right here, DCM, dynamic causal modeling models can uh, estimate uh, the coupling parameters given the structure of the model, okay, and uh, the experimental inputs and the observed data. This is why we say DCM is a hypothesis-driven approach. Without, without the uh, prior information about the, the structure of the model, you have no way to estimate the parameters behind behind this model. So the prior knowledge is you need to have a clear idea what should be the model behind this kind of the effect connectivities. This is a very, very uh, important point right here. So as Carl Fiston mentioned in their paper published in Neural Imaging, DCM is not an exploratory method. This is a very uh, strong model for the hypothesis-driven model, okay.
The S point right here, model inversion allows one to compute the evidence for each model. That means we have the chance, even you don't have the uh, one solid or correct answer for the model design, that's fine. You can actually design several different potential models. For example, you have 10 possible models on hand. You just don't know which one is the uh, most reliable one or the correct one. So you can just uh, give these 10 models to the DCM. DCM may use the basis estimation to tell you which one may be the currently best model for you to claim this, uh, for you to make the inference about this kind of effective connectivities. So I think there is a, a term called model evidence. This will help you to determine which model is the best one. Okay. And the nice point right here, equipped with the evidence, one can then compare models representing different uh, prior hypotheses of the functional architecture using basic model selection. It's just what I mentioned in the uh, point right here. And uh, finally, the tenth rule right here. Uh, normally, the DCM studies will attempt to answer three types of question. So focus on this point. If you have this kind of the question, you may consider the DCM. Otherwise, I would say maybe functional connectivity is enough for you. Okay. The first question is, what is the underlying functional architecture of a network of brain regions? It's very important. Uh, the term is not the connectivity, but the architecture. You want to know what is the right connection between, for example, the region we just mentioned, V1, V5, and SPC. You just try to uh, identify the correct or try to find out what is the reliable architecture between these regions. You can use this one. Okay, you have the prior knowledge. You have some idea in your brain. Okay. And the second point, which connections are modulated by experimental uh, manipulation? For the functional connectivity, we um, we introduced in the last week, we never talked about whether we can um, observe the potential effects from the experimental design to the functional connectivity. We never say that. However, uh, on the DCM model, they define the parameters of B. That means modulatory effects. That means you can allow the task input modulate the effective connectivity between regions right here. So if you are focused on this kind of issue, you can use the DCM. And the third question would be, are the coupling parameters of the network of or between brain regions different in two groups of people? For example, patient versus healthy controls. This is actually uh, pretty similar to what functional connectivity can do, but you can also uh, answer this, com this kind of a question uh, using the DCM or other effective connectivity approach right there. Okay. So I think these 10 rows is a uh, good summary. If you want to uh, find out more information, just find this uh, paper in neural imaging in uh, 2013. Okay. So I think this is the first part. So uh, I may take a five minute break right here. And uh, please, Make sure that you already download the handout and materials that I provided to you today. And we are going to use the SPM12 to practice the DCM process. Okay.